Let's take a look at how to use Khan Academy's Intro to Computer Science Python course together so you can learn how to best use it in your classroom. This course is a rigorous yet accessible introduction to the field of computer science using the Python programming language. The course sequence is about equivalent to a semester of an undergrad intro to CS course. It covers variables, conditionals, loops, functions, lists, and dictionaries. It does not assume any prior programming experience, so it's suitable for all students. We most recommend it for high school classrooms, but we try to keep the math prerequisites to just basic arithmetic and percentages. So the main barrier for younger learners will just be the reading level and the logical reasoning required. We created this course with a diverse set of learners in mind who may not have considered programming as something available or useful to them. So we make sure to ground every new concept in a real world problem to preempt questions like, why are we learning this? Along the way, we showcase some of the many different applications of programming so every student can find at least one motivation they can get excited about, whether that's data analysis, simulations, or game design. To find the course, you'll want to start by navigating to the Khan Academy site. Then, in the course menu, you'll look for the computing section, and under that, the Intro to CS Python course, which brings you to the course homepage. Here, you'll find the first way to access our web-based programming environment. Our beginner-friendly IDE comes with an easy way to write and run code, so your class can get to coding with zero setup time. And as long as they have an internet connection, your students can work from school or at home across laptops, tablets, and mobile devices. You can access all the programs you've created by clicking on the View My Programs button. Note that this page is also publicly visible through your Khan Academy profile. So beware of creating programs here that you don't want your students to see. The last button, Top Programs, brings you to a gallery of programs that other learners have created, which you or your students can use for inspiration. All of these buttons are available on the course homepage or at the top of any of the unit pages in this course. Let's take a closer look at one of our units. You'll notice that each unit covers a different core concept and comes with its own theme. The theme for our conditionals unit is algorithm design. So as students learn the new syntax, they'll also explore how to write and evaluate algorithms. Each unit starts with an intro video that introduces the unit theme. It also serves to identify the gap that the topics in this unit will solve. At the end of each unit, you'll find a project and a reference doc. The reference doc is a quick review of the new syntax learned in this unit. You might refer students back to this when they're studying or if they're stuck in later units. The project is the capstone for the unit. Students can apply all the skills they've learned to a creative open-ended programming assignment. Projects come with a detailed instructions article that walks them through how to go about solving the problem. When possible, we recommend going through the instructions and the starter code together in class to make sure students understand the requirements before they get started. Because projects are open-ended, the platform does not auto-grade them. Instead, we provide a rubric that students can self-evaluate against. You'll also have an opportunity to review your student's code yourself, or you can go through a peer review exercise in class. For students working at a faster pace, we also provide a more to explore section in the instructions. This provides more challenging or involved extensions for students to explore on their own or as a class discussion. Now, let's see how each lesson is structured. Lessons include a combination of instructional videos and articles. This video introduces new syntax for ELIF and ELSE branches. Other videos may trace through how the computer executes a program or discuss a higher level topic like algorithmic bias. If applicable, the video description links to the program used in that video so students can interact with it. Most articles also contain interactive example programs that students can run and modify in line to experiment with new concepts. These can also be opened in a separate tab. We use these examples to go beyond just the standard syntax so students can see how the concept is used in context and what problems it can solve. Every interactive program comes with a prompt to guide the student in exploring the program which can also be used as a discussion question. Articles may also include interactive activities like code review, where students evaluate an existing program's readability and suggest improvements. Following the main instructional content in each lesson, 
it is typically a standard Khan Academy exercise. These are multiple choice type questions that focus on code reading. We recommend using these to check for student understanding before they move on to the code writing portion. Students can attempt exercises multiple times and use guided hints to understand what they did wrong. Finally, at the end of every lesson comes a programming challenge. Challenges are a step-by-step auto-graded programming practice. About half of challenges are preceded by a program design video. These are worked examples that walk through how to solve a very similar program. These are great resources to prepare for the challenge and to refer back to if stuck. Challenges are the coolest part of this course. Students will extend a program incrementally to produce an exciting result, applying the concept for that lesson along the way. The leftmost panel provides the instructions for the current step, structured as user requirements, so students get practice going from a problem to code. As they modify and run the program, the platform provides automated feedback to nudge them onto the right path. When they meet all the requirements for that step and run the program, the platform will celebrate their progress and let them move to the next step. Once they've completed all the steps successfully, they can mark their challenge as completed and move to the bonus. Bonuses are not auto-evaluated, but they do give you options to provide extensions for students who work at different paces. To save you valuable prep time, you can find solutions for all the challenges and projects in the course in our Teacher Resources Unit. Finally, let's talk about how to assign content to your students. I'll start by opening up the Teacher Dashboard, where I've created a class with the Intro to Computer Science Python course. Because challenges and projects are specific to the computing courses, they unfortunately do not fit into the standard Khan Academy mastery system. That means you won't be able to assign a mastery goal for this course. However, you can still assign the course content individually. You can assign an entire unit, a lesson, or an individual item, like a challenge. When a student completes one of these items, their progress will now show up here. A project is marked as complete when the student submits a self-evaluation where they selected yes for all of the rubric criteria. Challenges are marked as completed only after all the steps are done. The teacher dashboard does not show partial completion. Make sure students are pressing the complete challenge button after they finish all the steps. They should be looking at the instructions for the bonus step. If they can still see the instructions for the last step of the challenge, then it hasn't been marked as completed. Now, what if you want to see the code your students wrote? This is a bit of a misnomer, but you'll want to go to the Projects tab in your teacher dashboard. This will show all of the programs that your students have written, including any that were made through the Create a New Program button. Very important, student work on challenges and projects will not show up here automatically. If you want your students to share their code with you, they'll need to create a spin-off of their finished challenge or project. The spin-off button copies their code to a new publicly available program, which will now show up in your teacher dashboard. The spin-off button only appears after a challenge is completed. On projects, the spin-off button is always available. To make programs easier to find, you'll want to instruct your class to use a consistent naming scheme, like the name of the challenge and their first name. This can also be useful to identify the program to be graded, since students can technically make multiple spin-offs of the same challenge. If your students are creating a lot of their own side programs, you can also filter directly for only the programs that are spun off from official course challenges or projects. We are so excited for your class to start its computer science journey with Khan Academy. If you have any other questions about implementing this curriculum, feel free to leave a message in the comments.